Pangenesis, page 242, marker. Semen is developed from every part of the body? What? Keep watching for more information on this zany theory of inheritance. Web. Welcome to Genetic Geeks and the start of our series called What You Thought You Knew About Genetics But Didn't. To kickstart the series, we are going to talk about the start of what we now know in modern genetics as the theory of inheritance. But at one point, it was called pangenesis. It all started with the Greek philosopher Hippocrates. I'm sure all of you have at least heard that name once or twice for various things, but I bet you didn't know he also dabbled in genetics. Hippocrates was very interested in how characteristics were passed down from parents to their offspring. So he proposed this theory of pangenesis in 410 BC. Pangenesis assumes that inheritance is based on the production of specific particles called seeds by all parts of the body and on the transmission of these particles to the offspring at time of conception. He based this off of his observations he made of a group of people called macrocephali. The macrocephali would mold their baby soft skulls into an elongated shape because they believed that people with long heads were part of nobility. Hippocrates believed that after generations of practicing this, eventually the trait would not have to be performed, instead it would be therefore inherited. A little weird, I know, but how are they supposed to know about genes and DNA without the technology able to study it? It made perfect sense that each characteristic was acquired by offspring because the whole body of the parents created the seed to make those characteristics for the new baby. Now Charles Darwin also thought this same thing, so an abridged and more focused version of Hippocrates' pangenesis was created. This theory complemented his theory of natural selection, since when he proposed natural selection, he didn't actually explain how an environment could affect the inheritance of evolutionary traits. So he created this theory. Darwin reasoned that every part of the body, including cells, created units of reproduction called gemmules that are specific for that part of the body, i.e. the liver creates liver gemmules and the eye, eye gemmules. These gemmules are mobile, and so they congregate in the sexual cells located in the reproductive organs. Then after the blending of the parental gemmules during conception, all the gemmules would unite with one another and start producing new cells of the same sort that had originally produced them, that therefore resemble the parent they came from. Darwin further argued that an environment could cause variations to gemmules of body cells or to those in sexual cells, so a collection of gemmules could reflect changes that had occurred to all parts of an organism's body. Another part of Darwin's pangenesis was that he assumed new gemmules were being produced continually, so he believed in the regeneration of parts was possible if they had broken off. He also proposed that some gemmules were passed on but remained dormant until generations after they were first passed on. This was to account for traits that a person's parents did not show, but grandparents or other relations did. There was no physical evidence to show that gemmules were actually a thing in the body. They were just invented to account for the observed phenomena of inheritance by Darwin. Hippocrates and Darwin created the foundation of how characteristics are inherited. It was looked at and argued, and some people figured out how traits are actually inherited. Darwin's observations and hypotheses, although wrong, led to help in areas such as sex-linked diseases, and some of his data became the core of Mendelian inheritance. So now you know. We did not always know that traits are passed on because of genes that are found on DNA within our cells. We at one point believed the traits were actually passed on because each characteristic produced seeds that form the new offspring. Thank you Darwin and Hippocrates. I'm glad that we now know semen is not produced by each part of our body. 